Station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We're ready for the event. CBS News, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. This is Bill Harwood, CBS News at the Kennedy Space Center. How do you hear me? Hello, Bill. We have you loud and clear, and it's great to talk to you today. Hey, it's great to talk to you. You guys look great in the airlock. Um, before I get around to uh, some spacewalk questions, let me ask Kate a quick one. I haven't spoken to her since she launched. Just wondering how the science is going, how the, how the research is treating you, and is it all going as, uh, as you expected? Yeah, actually, it's going great. Uh, the amount of research that we brought up on SpaceX 9 is incredible here, and so we've been having some packed days. It's really busy, but it's fantastic to see. Uh, Jeff remarked uh, the other day how busy the, the USOS was. We had all crew members here doing some kind of science experiment or another. And uh, just this morning, uh, we were growing some heart cells in space. We're looking at cardiomyocyte function. So it's really fantastic to see all this. You know, talking to you before launch, I got the impression that that work was your idea of fun. I was one of one of my standard questions to ask people who are up there for the first time is, what is the most fun up there, or, or maybe what's the biggest surprise? You know, in the in the reality versus versus expectations department. Well, I have to say, my expectations were not very well calibrated for how amazing our planet is. Um, you know, you work in mission control, you see this on the big screen all the time, and it is still nothing compared to the actual breathtaking view of the planet. So I was set a little bit low on that. Uh, it's about a thousand times more amazing than I expected. Fantastic. Well, well, Jeff, you guys are facing a pretty busy schedule the next few weeks. I uh, heard today that uh, the Cygnus launch is slipping to late September. The HTV-6 uh, is now on hold pending repairs. and. That's the one, of course, bringing up the, the new batteries for the solar arrays. Any major impacts from those delays on station ops, in your view? Uh, well, no direct impacts to us. I mean, the ground uh, team is going to fill our time to do work uh, based on the priority of the program. I think uh, probably what the major change uh, for us will be with Cygnus slipping out of Expedition 48, uh, the program is planning on adding a second EVA, so a second spacewalk. So we'll go out the first time uh, a week from Saturday, um, and then uh, probably, I, I think it's about a week and a half after that, go out a second time, around the 1st of September. So tell me about that first spacewalk, the, uh, the IDA installation, a little bit about what each one of you guys will be doing on that one. Well, the International Docking Adapter uh, came up on this Dragon, and uh, the, the ground team will, will pluck it out of the Dragon with the robotic arm and move it on the very front end of the space station on what we call PMA-2, where the shuttle used to dock. And, uh, and then we're going to go outside, and uh, we're going to outfit it. We're going to attach it to a station, uh, along with uh, some coordinated ground commanding to, to drive the hooks uh, to put it in its permanent position. And that will enable future vehicles to, um, to dock to the space station. And uh, the, the nearest term ones will be the commercial crew vehicles being developed right now by Boeing and SpaceX. But it is an international docking adapter, so it incorporates a new standard uh, that I'm sure will be used in other applications in the future, in, um, uh, bo both by NASA as well as potentially by uh, any international partnerships that come about in the future. You know, I remember covering the EVAs where those cables were run out for those for those IDAs, uh, which was very very tedious work. How how do you characterize this one to attach the IDA? Is it is it as tedious as those earlier runs? I saw you still have an awful lot of connections to make, et cetera, once the thing is in place. Yeah, we uh, the cables that we need for this IDA are already in place, so they're coiled up near the front end of the space station on the PMA. Uh, so we'll get out there, and as you mentioned, we'll, uh, our primarily uh, ta our primary task is to make up the connections. Uh, but we got to do some other things too. We're going to outfit the, uh, the the docking adapter with reflectors. We're going to cover up some old reflectors that were used for the shuttle, uh, and then we got some other tasks too to include the tedious task of of stretching out some cables for the the next IDA that will come up, as well as some uh, cables that are required for the Russian uh, um, logistics module. Uh, the MLM, which will come in the next couple of years, and then we got a couple of other tasks just to uh, to fill out the time, the planned time outside. So, Kate, how excited are you about uh, going out the hatch? I mean, that's a that's a spacewalking's a far cry from a a, a research laboratory, I would think. What's uh, what's your excitement level like right now? 
It's pretty high. It's uh, It's been a long time that we've been in training for this particular spacewalk, and ground teams have been working for years to put this together. Um, they also do all of the training for us. So uh, my excitement, I think, is mirrored with the folks that we're talking to on the ground that have helped us out, helped us get ready. They've watched me uh, from a very baby junior astronaut get ready all, all the way to getting out the hatch. And so it's just been really a joy to work with everybody to see this capability develop. And we're adding actual structure to the space station. We're putting a front porch on, if you will. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, and while you got the mic, tell me a little bit about the second EVA on uh, September 1st. I guess that's to retract that uh, radiator you guys call the ticker. I forget what the acronym is. I've got it somewhere. But tell me a little bit about the, the works required on that one and what else you'll be doing besides uh, the ticker retraction. Yeah, and that's actually a radiator that Sonny Williams and Aki deployed um, back on EVA-20. And so our goal is to bring that back in. It's not being used right now. And uh, there's a bunch of other tasks that are under consideration. Some of them might include installing some HD cameras on the space station. Um, and they'll let us know uh, once we get past this first EVA what all the additional tasks will include. Um, but it's part of the job that we do outside the space station to maintain it, to keep it healthy, uh, to make sure that it's running. It's a, it's a really fantastic machine. And you said tedious, but I don't think it's tedious at all to be able to get the chance to actually climb around on a vehicle traveling 17,000 miles an hour. No, I guess you're right. You've got to, have to recalibrate the, 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 <laughs> the adjectives you use for something like that. Uh, you, besides the, the, the radiator, somebody said something to me about uh, doing some work on some struts associated with the uh, solar alpha rotary joint. What, what's, that, what's that all about? Yeah, so that's actually just going to be um, inspecting the struts and uh, doing a little moving on the struts if we have time at the end of the ticker EVA. Okay. Jeff, uh, the spacesuits have been a bit of a question mark in recent years. Question mark is probably the wrong word, but there have been some issues you guys have had to work through. I know a new suit came up recently. How's all that stacking up? What's your confidence level? I see the suits behind you. What's your confidence level that uh, those guys are going to work like you need them to? Well, my confidence level is pretty high. The, you're right. We had some issues in the uh, recent past, um, and the ground team has done a great job to try to isolate the root cause of that. And, and uh, although I'm not sure we've 100 percent nailed down the root cause of, of some of the things that we've seen, uh, we've put some controls in place. They've put some controls in place, and they've run to ground uh, to put to put to bed, if you will, the risks uh, associated with those issues that we had. Uh, these suits have been checked out thoroughly. We checked them out the other day, um, and we got in them today to do a fit check, um, and everything is uh, is 100 percent. Very good. Uh, Jeff, uh, one more for you real quick. I know that on uh, August 24, you'll eclipse Scott Kelly's cumulative time in space. We've talked about this before. I guess that's the 520-day mark. And then if you come home on September 6, as scheduled, you'll have the U.S. record at 534 days. I know you've said before that setting records like that doesn't mean a lot in the big scheme of things, but, but that's a lot of time. I mean, do you ever reflect on that? That's, that's, a, that's a huge amount of time in space. Yeah, well, I reflect on the experience a lot. Uh, um, you know, and I think we've talked before, what comes to mind is just the honor of, of being part of the International Space Station from the beginning all the way uh, through the assembly to now and working with this great team. And uh, the, the team... Uh, has never been stronger than it is today. Uh, and that's with e each of the agencies. And I would say the partnership has never been stronger than it is today. And the space station, the operation, Kate alluded to some of the, the things going on here. You alluded to the, to the busyness that we've uh, seen um, here recently. Uh, the station utilization is really coming to, to, to blossom out to be very impressive. It, it occurred to me yesterday, Kate talked about how busy it was. It occurred to me yesterday, I haven't seen it this productive, uh, we're doing uh, very significant work uh, since um, uh, we were assembling this thing with a visiting shuttle crew. You know, it's interesting, and uh, you know, thinking about uh, the IDA you guys are putting on, that's of course going to eventually let you guys upgrade crew size to seven, which adds an extra person uh, to do science. Kate, how important is that to get an extra set of hands and eyes up there to, uh, to, to do the research and, as Jeff just said, to, to maximize the, the output of this thing? 
Absolutely. Every extra hour that we get up here, uh, we can add additional researchers' experiments. So the station program has been working really hard. Uh, there's been a lot of efforts to improve efficiency up here, and that's been really wonderful. And we're seeing that right now in terms of the fact that we can juggle several hundred experiments on a mission. And some of these are incredibly uh, intense, uh, you know, in detail, in depth experiments. We're starting to completely explore the system's biology, the space station. So we're using all of these modern techniques, the cell culture, sequencing, um, microbiome analysis, all of these things that, uh, that you would easily have available to you in an Earth lab that are really interesting, fascinating tech demos up on orbit. And uh, this is an incredibly productive lab at this point. Very good. And Jeff, I think I've only got time for one more question, so I'll squeeze in one about your landing. You come home and around September 6th. You've been there, done that before, but is there anything you're looking forward to this time around from a, I don't know, I know you miss your family, but food, drink, experiences, what are you, what are you looking forward to when you get back down on the ground? Uh, I look for, obviously, family's the first thing. My wife, uh, she's, uh, you asked about the days, uh, the number of days up here. She's the real hero in all this, uh, putting up with uh, me being up here that many days over the years. But I, I look forward to that. I look forward to uh, to quiet, uh, just uh, relaxing someplace, enjoying the view, enjoying the smells of Earth, all those things that we, we normally take for granted. You miss that when you're up here. We have continuous noise up here from fans and pumps. It's not loud, but it's continuous. So just those things, the, the simple things in life, good food, anything my wife wants to cook me, I look forward to that, uh, those kinds of things. Friends. Hey, guys, thanks a lot. I'm out of time. Have a great flight and look forward to talking to you down the road. Thank you, Bill. Great talking to you. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thank you, CBS News Station. Please stand by while we reconfigure video and audio communications. <laughs>